Welcome to Talking with Faith People. My name is Fuesto Enrico, and I'm the Fuesto de Talking de de Famioso de Piplio plays. And today I'm talking about existential terror. Why, how, when, whether. Well, the reason I'm talking about existential terror is this morning I woke up at about 5 a.m. and I recalled what Kimberly had said in the car as we were driving home last night from dinner. She said, you know, we've got 25 good years left, maybe, or that's a long time. You know, we, we're going to have 25 years together. And I said, yeah, okay, whatever. And I slept on it, I guess. I just sort of percolated. And when I woke up this morning, I, I woke to existential terror. This is realization that I got 25 years left, and is at functionally a third of my life. Hi, Sheila. I is weird. I just finished replying to emails, so I must have closed my email shortly before you sent yours. Um, and I was thinking about my parents and my dad's email to his friend that I read the other day because my mom had a copy of it printed out and was underlining shit for no reason as she does. Um, and it said he was emailing his friend Richard, same age peer that he's known for his, you know, probably 60 years now or something. And uh, he said to his friend Richard, you know, they say 82 is the new 68. <laughs> um, which is such a it's such a, I don't even know what to call it, but it, it caused me to just, when I woke up this morning and I felt, I started gasping for air with the notion that mortality is looming over me and I've got a limited amount of time to get things accomplished and I've got a lot more I still want to do and yada, yada, yada. And uh, I just had to throw off the covers and jump out of bed and come outside and just be awake then at that point. You know, I could have used a couple more hours of sleep probably. There was no going back to sleep. The only thing to do to expert existential terror is to distract yourself. Hi, Sinjen. Hi, Soralius. Welcome to my Friday morning live stream. I've been additionally wrestling with the existential realities of growing older in other ways, too. Like, I just don't have the the stamina and the body to to go like I used to go. I really need to get a full night's sleep almost every night and for as close to it as I can. And when I'm working out in the yard like it was yesterday helping camera with stuff, I get sore. You know, it's like my elbow is never really fully recovering and yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, I've periodically been overwhelmed by existential terror throughout my adult life. This, what's rooted, it's rooted in in weaker SI and some to some extent in that, you know, some of my earlier incarnations of existential terror were about time passing and stuff changing when I'm not looking and when I'm not noticing because I'm distracted over here with some other thing. And, you know, the the solid realities of my childhood uh, when I return to their, the location of my childhood have all changed and it's all gone. And there's, you know, it's like there's this moment when I go to my parents' house, it doesn't happen usually, but it happens one time at least where I, I almost forgot I was an adult and expected and like thought like when I was a kid, like, I wonder if, if Dave can play, you know, um, and then in a, in a millisecond, it all rushes back that that's all dead and gone, long gone and never to be again. And those realities were never as permanent as they seemed. And no reality is it's, it's, it's a difficult reality to stomach without gasping. Now, things have been, there's a, a certain comfort to be taken since I quit drinking. I developed a, uh, 
a faith modality that provides some some comfort in those in those areas and but of course one has to one has to reach out to to utilize that and it's not always my inclination to to seek meditative or prayerful solutions to those kind of problems my natural instinct is to rush out of bed and distract myself with something rather than actually deal with the with the reality of being a mortal you know being a mortal pe person means being a mortal means you're gonna die and everything you think is important is transient it's I mean it's the fundamental it's the fundamental crux of the human condition. Yeah, sometimes I was kind of terrors moment regarding other people's mortality since Jen. The idea that something could happen to my daughter or some old friend I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I used to stress a lot about my daughter too. Uh, and think to myself like, one of the worst things that could possibly happen is to outlive your own child. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to be here and experience the death of my parents, almost for sure, unless I die dramatically in the upcoming couple of years. You know, my dad might live till 95 or something. He might have another decade in him. I don't think my mom's got that long, maybe five years at most. And that's troubling. It's troubling to, to think about um, it's troubling to think about the death of one's parents and how hard that's gonna be. But you know, my daughter's gonna have to see the same thing. My daughter's gonna have to go through the same thing. And any alternative to that is much worse. <laughs> that means I'm gonna have to go through her death, you know. Yeah, um, Malenberg says, I feel quite strongly about never being able to return to the past. Nostalgia is often quite sad for me. I try to avoid it. You know, I, I gen generally avoid things that, that cause me feelings in general. Sheila says, I buried both my parents, but thought if I could do that for my own daughter would send me over. Yeah, I mean, I suspect that if my daughter were to die and I had to bury her, that I'd move on because of polar if I, but it would hurt me for the rest of my life anyway. I find religion takes care of fear of death, not fearing death when you've made an effort to do good in this world. Expecting a positive return to the afterlife helps in my case. I'm not... I don't necessarily have any any perspectives on afterlife. Um, I I maintain a, a uh, position that that I don't know what happens, and regardless, believing that I'm not going to be dead forever in a, in a permanent and and overwhelmingly Eric is gone since. Um, doesn't necessarily give me any comfort anyway. I see myself as having a lot of things to do. I mean, a lot of things to finish before before I can I can go. And and I I worry. I feel I feel sad about having wasted the part of the part of one's life that um, that often defines the rest of one's life. People's lives are defined too wholly, too young. There's, you have to be lucky and a certain kind of smart only to, to 
know what's important when you're young enough to do the things that are important to do to have the life you want to have. Nobody has an adequate perspective as children to make wise decisions, but the decisions they're making and the and the paths they're pursuing end up defining their whole lives. I've been lucky in the sense that my life has not been entirely defined by my early mistakes. Um, and the biggest early mistake is a lack of direction for me was anyway. It was just not understanding that you have a limited amount of time and you better get shit done and you better get yourself in a place where you can be, where you can accomplish meaningful things. Focus on that at the right time when you're young and you know what, but see, nobody knows where they're, what they're doing and shit. You know, it's hard. It's hard to know that. Uh, let's see here. Stephanie Douglas says, I tend not to believe in an afterlife, but that idea actually helps me stay focused on the here and now. I, yeah, I just, I don't find any perspective on the afterlife to be useful for me either way. It, because I'm not worried about what's going to happen after I'm dead. I'm worried about what's going to happen while I'm still alive. Uh, and I'm worried about dying too soon. Um doing the best I can is just everything that was. Yeah, I mean, I I believe wholeheartedly in in goodwill and good effort. And also I recognize that that's not going to be sufficient for me to feel like I've done my duty on earth. Pukoki says I think the best way to go through life is to live life to the fullest and take as many opportunities as you can. I mean, I, I would tend to agree. That sounds like seeking SE to me. But uh, I, I think it's take as many opportunities as you can is great. But I also, I mean, what I'm, what I'm kind of fixated on at the moment is the reality that reject as many tempting opportunities as you can so that you can focus on the ones that actually are promising. Because I have a tendency to jump at too many things. You know, I've got so many things on my fucking plate. It's ridiculous. Malandrix says, I've never feared death, I guess because I know I won't suffer because of my death. If I were a much more forward-thinking person in terms of myself, something I'm working on, I would maybe fear death more. I mean, I know I don't like suffering, and I know I fear suffering, or I I avoid it at most at, at all costs. You know, I like comfort, um, but death doesn't bother me because it involves suffering. Although I've talked to other people who said that before too. I had I've talked to ISFP who said that it was like, well, I'm not afraid of death, but I'm afraid it's going to hurt. It's like, really? <laughs> Okay. Um, I worry more about my legacy in this world, what remains when I will be gone and what I do about, than I do about the afterlife. I worry somewhat about my legacy, but I also recognize and sort of feel inherently that once I'm dead, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to get to experience anything from it. Now, it may matter to other people. I may do things that impact the world long term in a positive way, and that's a good thing. But it won't do me any good once I'm dead, is my assumption. Um, when I go get down, I find what helps is volunteering and doing anything not for myself is more rewarding than when I, when I get down, I find that what helps is SI. So, like, this week I haven't been on the internet very much, and I've been making a lot of videos and stuff, and it's because I've been, I've been doing SI stuff. I've been cleaning up around the house, I've been helping Kimberly put together shit, and and all that kind of stuff, you know. So that's that's that grounds me a lot. And there, are, when I'm too much in uh, abstraction land, then I have this hunger that I sort of recognize, but definitely feel um, to attend to my nest, my nesting concerns, and my body and my my well being and stuff in a physical level. It's it's frustrating because I see it half as half as a waste of time, but I also understand it's necessary because I'm a human being. I'm not just a work machine. 
Um, positive and directed opportunities for Kobe says, yeah, I mean, I agree that to, to move on as many meaningfully linked projects as possible is, is life lived at its fullest. Past your personality says secular humanism has no way to deal with suffering. It gives no answers to how to deal with it. Um, I don't know if that's true. I think what secular humanism denies people is, is a spiritual humility that's necessary to be whole. That's just my opinion, though. I am a little lamb. My fleece is white as snow. And everywhere that Mary goes, I'm also sure to go. Taurini, I am to be airbender. I am I am to be. I agree that the with the ISFP that said death doesn't bother me. I just care about how much it may hurt. Well, okay. Technically, I'll be euphoric, says Cerulius. About what? Well, you're technically euphoric. I know you seem very depressed, but technically that's euphoria. I've experienced something similar. Just taking a day to clean up my act and take a break. Since large amounts of dopamine, endorphins, etc. are released. When what happens? When you have a pet chicken, I agree. Jared Chan always retracting those messages. Jared's messages are like his penis, retractable. Why do you feel you still have things to do before? Where do these desires come from? And that's a very good question. And it's something that Shrink once talked to me about. Um, why is it that I feel like I have to be productive all the time. Why is it that I feel like I have to achieve like completed things in order to be okay? I don't know. I have no idea. I kind of like <laughs> the, the magical thinking explanation I heard one time, which is that the reason I'm like this is because in a past life, I was too lazy and mooched off others. Well, now now you feel exposed, though, Jared, because now I've told, shared everybody, shared with everybody the fact that you have a retractable penis. You had shared that with me in confidence, I believe. I'm sorry, I didn't, I forget, it slipped my mind that I was supposed to keep that confidential. But everybody gets to let you know, yes, Jared has a retractable penis. What does that mean? It means, uh, in winter, he stores it up inside of him. He can retract it all the way inside of his body to keep it warm. What is the path to actualization for the INFJ? Well, I've said before, and I'll say again, that INFJs have a uniquely unfair path towards actualization. For an INFJ to actualize means for them to successfully prioritize that which is argumentationally defensive over that which is successful. <laughs> for me, it's the other way around. I have to learn to prioritize that which is socially successful over that which is argu argumentationally successful. But that means I get increasingly effective as I age, right? But for INFJs to actualize, they have to do the hard work, the hard decision making to say, I am going to be less effective from now on because I want to make sure that people are engaging with me and my ideas authentically and 
providing an authentic response to the NI I present based on its merits, not on my presentational stuff. So that's a hard one for you guys to do because you gotta you gotta intentionally make life less easy for yourselves. And that seems like a a weird thing. Sanjin says he's INTJ. I have my doubts. Um, Arthur, Asher Oak, I'm a shrink like Jared's. Oh. It doesn't shrink, it retracts. It stays the same length, it just goes up into the body instead of out of the body. The pain is before death. I think death itself is painless. Took care of my mom dying from cancer, and that was so painful for her last look. But her last breath, there was no more pain. Santa Claus is here. Hi, Santa. Thanks for all the presents over the course of the years. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to get some elves. Even if I had elves, though. I'd still be like, okay, now that I got all the elves doing shit, now I can start working on this thing that I really want to work on. <laughs> um, apparently, that's a trait most humans share. The minority who are into spiritualism and consciousness promotes stillness and only doing things as and when they come up as opposed to anticipation. Well, you know, I have this notion that everything can be be reduced to a calculus between expectations and realities and the difference between them. Uh, no, I haven't moved on from the topic. Gurus such as Muji and Sadhu Guru promote this. Promote stillness and only doing things as and when they come up as opposed to anticipation. Well, see, if we break everything down in terms of expectations and realities, what they're really saying there is try to not have expectations, then reality will never conflict with it, and you won't be disturbed by that, the distance between reality and expectation. But my take on it is expectation and conscious existence are almost the same thing. That to be a consciously existing person is to form expectations. And I also, it occurs to me that there's really a simple definition for any kind of unhealthy behavior. Any kind of, of like psychological unhealth can boil down to bad expectations. Because if it is the case that suffering occurs when expectations deviate from reality, and if you have bad expectations, you expect bad shit to happen, then when good shit happens, it's going to upset you. And that would seem to me to comprise the basic engine of all human unhealth is bad expectations. Do you think it's effective? Let's see here. I think you're an INFJ syndrome. Um, you, all of your reasoning is TI. It's not TE. You're just a particularly bright INFJ, and I've met them before. You know, not all INFJs are equal. Not all ENTPs are equal. Not all ISTPs are equal. Whatever. Um, and some INFJs are more attentive to the perception angle of things, and some INFJs are have chosen a route of perception management that prioritizes their successfully being and just seeming and to successfully seem smart to smart people you have to actually be smart in other words you have to actually make good arguments you can't just fake it that's what enfjs try to do they just try to fake it infjs either recognize that they can pull it off in which case they will because that's kind of happy the perception they'd like to have of people to have with them or they realize they can't really pull it off in which case they take a different angle of attack socially Either way, they're going to be successful in their in their presentational stuff. And you definitely convinced me you're very smart. So, you know, I think you're an INFJ. Let's see. 
Stephanie Douglas has elves. They're disguised as school children. <laughs> That's a good disguise. I would have recognized that way. Um, I think people you left behind experience more pain than the person who's dying. Yeah, I agree with that. Sure. Um, I mean, most of the pain of death is experienced by those who survive it. I'm not sure, actually. My guess is that I'm in I do you think it's effective to start hobbies, says a human and her higher self, also known as us. Um, do you think it's to start hobbies is a way of dealing with existential dread? I really like learning about outdoor stuff, survival, self defense, shooting, et cetera. Always be prepared. I do think is a, I mean, that's my only way of dealing with existential terror. And I, I call it existential terror rather than dread because. Dread seems to me something that hangs over you for a stretch of time. Existential terror comes up and blasts me in the face, and then I run away from it, and it's, <laughs> it's gone for a while again. I just have to make sure, not, don't look over there. Do not look over there. That's where existential terror is. Um, is there a function that may be responsible for caring about legacy being remembered? Well, so far, the things you've told me, Tao Rainey, INTP, Airbender, suggest to me you're not an INTP. INTPs do care very much about legacy. It's just, it's a personal legacy that they build with their third slot SI. It's their hidden agenda. So they want to construct a life narrative comprising a bunch of pearls of attainment and achievement that are, are just the right thing, not too much of anything. And they definitely care about that. They're lost in their theories and their ideas, and they want those ideas to be respected by other people and to persist in time after they're gone and stuff, for sure. But, I mean, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Very true. I had this conversation with my therapist. I personally don't set higher or lower expectations. I set none. The thing, the problem with expectations is most of the expectations we have, we don't set. They're, they're part of who we are. And we can become more or less conscious of them and try to recognize them as just expectations. But, you know, our, our entire being is built on expectations. The fact that those people were saying like, well, let's just be still and only do things as and when it comes up expects and assumes and predicts that shit's going to come up and that they're going to be able to be still for some stretch of time and that they're going to be able to distinguish between that which comes up and that which they're creating as though there's a clear bright line there or something what about something comes up in their head is that good enough you know it's ridiculous it's a ridiculous notion um sounds like Emotional reappraisal, trying to transform nervousness into excitement, for example. I mean, what I'm doing, I call it avoidance. <laughs> I call it being a type 7 in Negro. What do I do when I'm scared of something? I fiddle while Rome burns, or I bury my head in the sand like an ostrich. Sorelius, you just got exposed. So did uh, um, Jerry Chan and... You know, I, I'm, in, I'm in an exposing mood today, I guess. I'm going to expose everybody's secrets. Malandrix has a third nipple on the tip of his nose. Little known fact. As I think, and I be, I can pretend and rationalize that I don't care about legacy, but I do feel some deeper need for it that I don't currently understand. There would be no such as T, E, or F, E, or N, I, or N, E if there were no such things as expectations. Right. On my deathbed, would I care that I didn't make a difference? I don't know, but I would definitely care if I felt I was a bad person. Yeah. Um, you don't want to feel like, like, I'm not worried about that. I don't, I don't have any worries that I'm a bad person. I know that I'm, I uphold. Can you guys hear me? Did the sound just go off or, or can you hear me? My check. Uh, you can't hear me. I guess it's going through this mic over here. All right, never mind. Yeah, I, I just realized that my mic's not plugged in. I was like, how can they even hear me? 
Well, the reason is because it's not using this much, so it's fine. Wait, we can hear you. Okay, Asher confused me there. Um, I yeah, I care about whether I'm a good person or a bad person, but um, but I'm not worried about that. You know, I'm not I'm not concerned that I'm going to end my life thinking I did evil, or that I wasn't I wasn't fair. And and you know, being a TI tool user, to me, as long as I'm always fair and compassionate then I'm a good person. And what it means to be fair and compassionate is I will battle you, you know, with full full blast battle. But as soon as you start to cry, I go, oh my God, I'm sorry, my bad. Because I don't want to actually hurt people. You know, so in that regard, I, I'm not worried about being a bad person. I'm not worried about doing evil. I'm not worried about being dishonest. I'm not worried about those kind of things because it, I just, it mostly just type luck. Being an ENTP means being objectively self critical and not, and first and foremost, not being guilty of hypocrisy because being FI polar means relying on, on consistency to replace one's importance metric. Um, let's see. Through perhaps logically, it doesn't make sense to have no expectations for the reasons you described. The utility of telling myself to set no expectations and proving something. Like okay, well, yeah. That, now, look, the difference between having no expectations and consciously, willfully setting fewer expectations or adjusting the expectations you're setting to make them more reasonable or something, that I think is a very good thing to do. I think thinking about what comprises our expectations and, you know, since I started framing my and Kimberly's difficulties through that frame, things have really cleared up to me. Like, okay, well, here's where, what she must be expecting because every time I do this, she gets upset in response to that. She's expecting something else. Now, what's weird is the thing I'm doing to me seems like the right thing to do, the fair thing to do. Blah, 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 blah. So what does that tell me? Tells me she's expecting me to do the wrong thing and the unfair thing. So that's that's the issue. And yada yada. Expose you, Chrism the Prism. Well, I will tell, I don't want to tell your whole secret. But several of his organs are actually prisms. That is to say, they diffract light. He's one of the few biological creatures on Earth that has the capacity to diffract light with body parts. And that makes him pretty special. But he's embarrassed because the ladies say it's too pointy and sharp. Okay. Um, so there you go. You're exposed now. How does creativity manifest in NI users as opposed to NE users? Do you think cognitive functions influence what type of art people gravitate towards? Well, the second question, absolutely I do. And the first question is, NI users, it, creativity manifests with them in that they are, they are waiting for the creative vision. And when the creative vision comes, it comes holistically it comes as a complete thing and then the challenge for them is knowing the vision well means understanding well what's involved in doing it and doing a complete vision well is a big task so it's why um infjs have trouble with se intjs have a little less trouble with it because they even though they have it in the same slot their TE means they can much more efficiently attain that vision than can the INFJ. So INFJs really need somebody to help them manifest their art. And one of the things that I feel good about is having INFJs work with me on videos and stuff. I, I used to feel kind of guilty about it because I didn't think they were getting anything out of it, really. I was like, 
you know, hey, I, I'll make, all right, if you want me to make videos with you for your channel too, that'd be fine. You know, that would be fair. Eventually I realized they can't motivate themselves to do shit really very easily. And they want to do shit and they want to be out there, but they lack the SE because for them, they, they need, they want to feel like they have a clear vision about what they're going to make as a video. And then they want to execute that video so that it's consistent with that vision. And to the extent that it's perfectly consistent with that vision, it's going to be a massive piece of work because if you're trying to execute a vision perfectly, it's always going to require a lot of work. In contrast, I go, <coughs> well, <coughs> I just feel like making something. You want to make something? And then it liberates them from that vision vision jail that they're in and they're able to to be creative and and put things out there and let and reveal let their ni do what it ought to do which is produce resonance for other people like here here's a singularity that'll resonate with everybody they get to do that successfully without having a singular vision going in and comfortably knowing that all i can always just ramble on about whatever and it'll give them plenty of shit for their NI to sit there. You know, because NI, what it does is like, I'll toss, like, think of NI as a wet paper plate that's that's uh, held on to two chairs, okay? So there's an empty, there's a valley between the two chairs, okay? And it's like clamped on the end, but the paper plate's wet. Well, I'm tossing cupcakes onto this wet paper plate. And when it hits like five or six cupcakes, then the paper plate breaks and they all fall into the ground and it, and it falls together in such a way that it becomes a statue of, of David, the statue of David, but in cupcake medium. Um, that's N.I. And my N.E. is just throwing cupcakes around. And, you know, that's why I love this is this is so N.E. conducive. It's like... Um, I get prompted by a series of, of new prompts to let my any run and ideate off on various prompts. So let's go see where I left off. IG, I'm retractable as well. Well, it's, you know, it's, this is so liberating for us to confess our darkest secrets like this in, in front of everybody is one way that we get to know I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And everyone doesn't hate me just because I have a retractable penis. You have a squat. Uh, I skipped one. Hey, Eric, nice to see you back live. Thank you, LJ. It's nice to be back live. Alexander Hansen. For example, maybe high SE users prefer making visual arts and any users prefer language semi start. Um, I think you and any users prefer jamming and I users songwriting. I think you have it perfectly correct. Uh, except, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily jamming. Any users prefer creating constructively, and NI users prefer creating executively. So, NI users are trying to execute a vision, and any users are trying to uh, construct something. Any NI is like baking a cake, any is like making stir fry. So I just keep adding little shit. Oh, maybe maybe the stir fry can go with banana pieces in it. Let's put some bananas in there. And it's, and that is actually how I cook too. So um you know, I just get this notion. Hmm. This could turn out really good. This could be like surprising. People would be like, wow, who would have expected bananas in my stir fry? It's absolutely delicious. Of course, it almost never turns out good. Usually it turns out bad. But hope springs eternal. Um, let's see here. Uh, SE users, yeah, I agree. They're more individual arts and or dancing, something like that. Mm, maybe even something like uh, maybe something like sculpting, you know, which is another very physical medium. Any users and NI users are both language sound based in my opinion i think you have it exactly right you know a soft squishy inside i've always been able to see that in a, you no matter how big your bark's been i do have a very soft squishy inside i'm i'm pretty damn moist for fi polar i feel about as damp as fi polar gets you know i'm always tearing up about shit. um 
do you ever feel bad because you feel you aren't quite where you want to be? Yeah, uh, but I don't, it's not, I feel, I feel frustrated about that mostly, not really bad. I feel bad about the fact that, you know, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm trying to do now what I should have tried to do when I was 20 years old. And, you know, supposed to, if I'd done this when I'm 20 years old, now granted there wasn't YouTube when I was 20 years old, but if I had put the amount of effort into doing shit that I do now when I was 20, then I'd probably already have, I'd, I'd be positioned to do the rest of the things I need to do, you know? So that makes me feel bad. I feel regret about wasting my life, but, you know, shit happens. <laughs> I don't know what else to that. I can't go back and change it. Um, yes, I wasted a lot of years being drunk. Well, I, I'm not wasting them any, anymore. Last night, for the first time in five years, I had a non-alcoholic beer. I had two of them, actually. I, uh, I had avoided doing drinking non-alcoholic beer because I thought it was kind of playing with fire or something. I don't know why. But, you know, nowadays, I am I just thought to myself, well, it doesn't, Eric, it doesn't have any alcohol in it if you want it. No, I'll call it beer, get one. It says 0.0% alcohol, so drink it. Um, and it was, <laughs> when I first took a sip of it, I was just like, oh. And I fucking pounded that thing. It was gone, and like, I was just like, fucking, it was gone. And then it was it was a two-for-one deal at House of Wayne. They said, they just got this new product, Heineken 0.0. .0 in like two days or three days prior. I was the first person to order one, actually, is what we just said. And they had a two for one deal, so I got two. But the second one, I like real beer. I didn't pound the second one. And I sort of, uh, by the end of it, I was ready to move on to a different beverage, you know, because it's the alcohol that makes me want to keep drinking more of it, not just the beer taste. Um, let's see. Maybe it comes down to your extroverted value function. Any, I want to be unique. Effie, I want to be like. Yeah, I mean, it sort of does. Um, I think the, the fundamental expectation of any is that all is that failure is okay. I'll be afforded another chance. That's not always the case, you know, and that's that's the underlying expectation that forms the character of all any doms is failure is okay i'll have another chance so just try yeah and that's true with language it's true with with anything any doms don't believe in learning about things ahead of time and then doing them they believe in learning as they do and i think it has to do with four slot si and recognizing the fact that, you know, like I need to repeat things a lot for them to get sunk down into my memory and be, be useful as a, as a, an existing resource that persists. Let's see here. I feel like I just want to construct a number of things in the world that will be fun to make and that will be relatively beneficial. <laughs> that's pretty much what I'm doing. That's, that's exactly what I'm doing. It is all about the fun. I, I mean, I want to have fun all the time. I love playing. I, I got this comment today that was just such fucking garbage and pissed me off. And uh, maybe I'll read it in a little bit. So maybe just value functions in general. TI, yeah, I want to feel smart, but I don't necessarily judge that against others. I mean, I think T.I. says, I want to be able to defend with words, whatever it is, successfully. Um, distinction between a more introverted ENHP to a more socially graceful and less awkward INHP. If you look at somebody like Zachary, who I think now self-identifies as INTJ ridiculously, Zachary is an example of a very socially graceful INTP. And in fact, I find in general, INTPs can be more socially graceful than ENTPs because they're not in EDOMs. They don't walk into every situation with the assumption that failure is okay. 
I'll have another chance if I fuck it up the first time. And, you know, it's like I'm famous for making terrible first impressions. I've been accused of this by every woman I've been with. Like, I cannot take you anywhere. You make terrible first impressions. Will you just act normal around these people, please? And, you know, a lot of times it's like, I don't even think I'm acting weird. I think I'm acting normal. And I get fucking my chops busted. Okay. Um, let's see. I started to realize that I fear happiness and giving myself a spotlight or praising myself. I actually fear pain and humiliation less than being praised and feel awkward after getting compliments. Well, now that's something an INGP would say right there. Out of all my exes, I noticed the NFs were the ones that worried, cared the most about legacy or being remembered after death. NFs? I mean, I think that would be true for the NFJs for sure. NFPs, I'm not so sure about that. I don't think NFPs are particularly interested. I mean, I guess INFPs, I think INFPs manifest their third slot SI differently than INTPs. They see their SI thing as being constructing a, a life of of genuine close bonds and and emotion stuffs. So it's less legacy oriented. I guess their legacy is their family or their loved ones or their relationships. Um, that's interesting. I love when you talk about cognitive functions. Most my secondhand understanding comes from you. Uh, cool. Hey, you are back. I am. Uh, LJ, nobody liberates me from vision jail because it works, lol, and I see it work the way I want it to. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think you're an INFJ, LJ. I was saying that for INFJs, particularly. INTJs, if you are an INTJ, you have a different manner of dealing with your fourth slot SE than INFJs do. Think it, think it through more. I agree. My question about evolution was kind of stupid. Did, you, did I miss a question about evolution? <laughs> Oh, that's uh, when it comes to evolution, is your view that it simply shouldn't be trusted or just isn't true? I don't think that's a stupid question. Um, my, my understanding of it is that it fails to substantiate its fundamental claim or attempts to shift ground away from making any claim in order to still retain some... Um, defensibility while not actually doing anything. So, you know, that's what I think about that. I don't really think it's, I mean, I, I think it's not true. Um, as far as trust goes, it's not a trust issue. I trust the scientists to do the science as best they can. I just think they're interpreting the results wrong. But I don't think it's a bad question. Why do ENFPs look like half-baked sensors? I have no no way to even begin to answer that question. Do they look like half-baked sensors? Oh, uh, lol, any cooking. Loss of, what type is most standoffish, bitchy, and hard to get to know? Uh, I'm mean, probably like ESTJ or something, but I mean, it's, it's, those are those are two different questions. Which is the most standoffish or bitchy? Is a different question from which is the hardest to get to know. The hardest to really get to know would probably like be an ISFP or an INFP. They keep their their cards closest to their best for the longest period of time because they understand the importance of their feelings most. But that doesn't mean they're going to be standoffish or bitchy. That's probably going to be an STJ, ESTJ problem. Um, let's see. My taste buds are in E and my stomach in I. Speaking of, how much would you charge to type my heart for you? Well, I charge for heart typings. I charge in those little candy hearts with the words on them. 
Um, it's it's the same price, a hundred candy hearts for seventy five minute session. But instead of talking, we just stare at each other, and I look into your heart the whole time. So it's not very reliable. I mean, I just tell you right now for free, you probably have an ENTJ heart, but I could be wrong. Um, I can see NFs caring about legacy because of FI. Maybe, I don't know. Cognitive functions provide too much data to think about. Oh, I agree with you sometimes about that. As though I never ran out of reference point because all life involves people. That's true. Sinjin, I relate completely with INFJs can't motivate themselves to do shit. <laughs> I once tried horseradish with peanut butter between two slices of bread. It was terrible. It sounds terrible. I didn't like it. I'm not surprised. Even when I got the ratio to be greatly on peanut butter, I ate only half of it before throwing it away. Well, congratulations for eating half of it. Horseradish and peanut butter is a weird mix. Although, I got to say, I did, when I was in middle school, I went through a phase where I put peanut butter on my ham sandwiches. I thought it was good to have both ham and cheese and peanut butter, but not jelly. And I had my mom make them that way for a couple of years in middle school. But um, and then I got sick of it. Uh, but not, not horseradish. <laughs> what function stack type is most likely to appear cold or uncaring but be sensitive and soft on the inside? INTJ. For sure. INTJs are are wet. They are wet, but you, they don't reveal it, you know. They're wet with a combination of despair and rage. Despair at humanity's folly and rage that everyone's doing everything wrong. I used to make things called experimental smoothies and throw what if whatever was in the fridge or pantry. Never disappointed as it either tasted good or made someone be okay. <laughs> what type do I think Zizek is? He might be an HP. Full of shit, but he might be an HP. Probably. Uh, he's an HP who never who never got who never got in the right social frame to get to get the ethics down. Uh, you talked about how INTPs want their legacy to go, but what about ENTPs? I mean, I don't want to die. I don't want to have a legacy. Legacy involved means I'm gone. That's what my basic position on legacy is. But yes, I do. I want. I want to know that that time objects of my genesis persist beyond me. But I want to know that in the status quo, too, not after I'm dead, necessarily. See, it's, it's already the case that I have a legacy in some regard. I'm still alive, but my legacy is that which I've already done. And people interact with it in, in ways that I will never be aware of. And that's great. And that's how it's supposed to be. And then sometimes, you know, the universe will throw little, little surprises at you, like, Somebody will contact you and say, blah, 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 blah. I need to talk to them. And then you'll realize after a while, oh, this person knows this thing that I did and that thing that I did and this other thing that I did. And wow, this person really knows a lot of my shit. Like, they've, they're they paying a lot of attention to me. That, I like that a lot, you know? Like, it makes me feel like I'm not failing. If people are paying attention to me, then I'm not failing because... People only pay attention to things worth paying attention to on their metric. And if smart people are paying attention to me, then I must be saying decent things because people, if people I respect are paying attention to me, then I know that I'm not utterly failing. Now, granted, there's stuff that people pay attention to that I just think is, is I have no conception of why people like this kind of stuff or whatever. There's Random shit I see on YouTube that I just think, how in the world does this person have 500,000 subscribers? It's absolutely awful. But, you know, I just, 
my bro is INTP and plays an Indian flute. Is that your colloquial term for penis? Eric, is there someone, a longtime friend, who is who I'm struggling tight? Do you have any pointers for the tricky ones? Well, find out what's important. Find out what their understanding of the meaning of the word importance is. Um, listen to them talk about things and and determine how often they they afford issues of importance. They afford importance to issues. Ask them like when in a natural flow of conversation when there's two things, two ob potential objects of analysis, ask them to distinguish between the two on grounds of importance and see what they do with it. That'll tell you a lot about FI. That's how I, that's how, when I go to look for FI directly, see, when you said tricky ones, if I'm, if I'm stuck to the spot where it's tricky one, that means I'm down to looking for FI, which is my last course of action. And, but sometimes it can be the thing that, that knocks everything else loose. If, if you're sort of ideationally constipated about somebody's type, aim for the spots where you don't normally aim for and see what happens. See if you can dislodge anything. Because that's what I would do. I would, I would look for, I start talking about what's important and what it means when something's important and how important it is that people respect what's important to you, stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Which type hates the social hierarchy the most? Probably ENTPs. I'm I'm as egalitarian as, as a person can be, just about, and I hate I hate anybody trying to say affirm because of who I am or negate because of who I am rather than because of what I say. It, there's something about being a TI tool user that says, okay, I want discourse to resolve this thing. And when you have an any paired with it instead of an SE, it means I want to talk this thing to death. And hierarchy is the opposite of talking things to death. Talking things to death, it happens when there's nobody really leading and pulling the trigger and saying, enough chit chat, let's get shit done. Um, so that's what makes ENTP so democratic, egalitarian or whatever. Uh, let's see. I like your weirdness and weirdness in others. Does that mean I must be born so I can live vicariously through others? Sheila, you just, we like our fifth slot functions. So I like your NI, you like my NI. I like your PN. <laughs> My PN, huh? <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see here. I found I deal way better with compliments and praise when I've divided the responses. Yeah, that's a good point, Malandrix. The proper way, to, if you're feeling uncomfortable by, by receiving praise and and stuff. I feel uncomfortable, too. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I used to feel a lot more uncomfortable about it. The What I do now is I... I, I take a moment to offer a sincere, you know, thank you. I really appreciate hearing that. And then I just continue on with, with then change the topic immediately, you know? Um, and I do, I let myself feel good about it too. It, it was not something I used to do. I used to reject praise as potentially dangerous that I might start to believe it and, and stop being self-critical enough for something. I don't think I, I don't think I don't that I uh, thought of it as danger for me. It was, it's like, what do you mean I'm a miracle worker? I just put my fingers through your hair. Like, and I'd be like, I didn't do anything. Right, because you're still trying to be like, I don't want to run the risk well, of just, over over inflating myself or something. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I, I do not over inflate myself. I know that I have a lot of 
uh, hey, Sheila, hi, can you say hi to me? Hi. Um, <laughs> I know that I have a lot of knowledge because I've been doing it for a long, long time. However, uh, um, you know, for people when they say, oh, my God, you have magic fingers. And I'm like, oh, please. I usually freeze up and don't know what to say, but just let your Annie run a bit after a simple thanks. Yeah, right. Hey, Joey Joe. Oh my God, it's Joey Joe, 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 Hearts, stars, um, clovers, or clovers, rainbows, thunderbolts, rainbows. I want to add some stuff to your t shirt, it's looking cute. Yeah, Kim is we're making a serious progress on those things. Kim's got the t shirt thing all figured out, and uh, I think in fact, today I'll probably make a, a run to the post office. I got my mom, I got a couple other things I gotta do. I gotta go down all the way to Long what Beach. What are you doing to the post office? Maybe nothing to Zandy. Oh, well, I want to send her some other things. I'm not finished with her stuff yet. Okay. Sorry, well. Zandy. Okay, well. Amber's is all stuff, though. Okay. So let's see here. Do I think you're an ENTJ, Asher Oak? I don't know what you are. I have no idea. I have no opinion about it at all. Didn't you type him? Her? Asher Oak? No. I thought you were self identified as INTP. I think you did. If I remember correctly. Greetings to all hosts, Eric. You are looking so fierce and fabulous as always. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. That um, was a gift from my son to Eric for Christmas. I got a new hat, by the way. And when I got it, I thought, I want to make sure to get Amber depending on it. But I guess I don't have it's it out car. here. Is it? Yes. All right, yeah. let me go get it. I want to get my new hat. Why don't you take this to the trash? Just talk to it for a second. In the car. I could have swore it was in the car. Sorry, I'm not talking, y'all. It's a little early still. Haven't had my coffee. Okay, so I was actually wearing my little sheep hat because it's so cold. This is my new hat. I got it at the thrift store. It's Warren Hills Cancun Jazz Festival. Now, if you're not familiar with Warren Hills Cancun Jazz Festival, that makes two of us. But what I want to stress is that it was obviously a very important jazz festival. And Warren Hill wanted to make sure he had his name on it. So he had these hats made, and I was fortunate enough to be able to pick one of these beauties up. Uh, but the reason I'm wearing this hat, like I said, is because it's so cold. 
not because it's fabulous or fierce. Let me tell you all, it's California cold. Freezing. There's, well, I mean. It's going to be like 55 degrees. <laughs> it's not that cold. You know, is that cold? I mean, yeah. It might be. It might be but 60. It doesn't matter if it's 80 degrees, you still have your six layers of jackets on. Let's see. Legacy might be more N-I-T-E. I think Legacy is probably more of an N-I thing. Because N-I is more like a person as a character. S is more of a person as a person. Um, thank you, Amber Drasher. You are already a Legacy. That means that's how I got into Harvard. Uh, as a Legacy. My parents donated uh, one half of a library or something. No, not really. I Are you sure that was that you were the son that they sent to Harvard because I saw your college oh, yeah. transcripts. I'm gonna make a video about that. I'm gonna share share with you guys. I went to uh, UC Santa Cruz where we didn't have grades. We had written evaluations and pass fail. <laughs> Some of those evaluations are hilarious. I, I was yeah, such a terrible such a student. student. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is gay. Oh my god. What? I didn't know. She's been stuck in a heterosexual relationship for 40 years. 50 years now, almost, and she's been a lesbian the whole time. How unfortunate. I wish she would have told me. I would have encouraged her to go, you know what, Mom, you go out there and you just do your scissoring. I know you need to scissor like anybody. Do you need a scissor? Amber Drasher says, I often wonder if I'm truly an ENFP. I mean, What's a campaigner? <laughs> ENFPs are not campaigners. That's such a silly title for them. I broke this bong now, too. We've got this. If I could put this in here, then it'll work. Okay, but we got to take that part out now. I know, I know. And the place was closed, though, anyway. Um, okay, I'll get one today. Let's see here. Sheila, are you an EXFP? No, Sheila is an INFJ. Um, ENFPs are not campaigners. ENFPs are, they are, they're ideational in a more personal way. That's what it boils down to. They're a lot like, a lot of them are a lot like ENFPs. You know, and for somebody who's looking at type descriptions or displays or something, a lot of ENFPs think, understandably, that they're ENTPs. But, um, you know, the difference is, are you ideating a, about stuff that's personally meaningful to you and yours? And, or are you ideating about stuff that's more, that's more in, like, that's more TI, you know? The thing is, like, ENFP and ENTP both might make some of the music that I make. It might come out of an ENTP or an ENFP, because not TI or FI, necessarily. And so that's where it gets kind of confusing. Death is just a transitional part of our journey, says LJ. Finding self-actualization should be a goal for someone, though, if they haven't gotten there yet. I don't think there is any getting there. You have stretches of your life that... You feel like you're doing things pretty well, pretty right. And you're feeling like, hey, I like who I am. I like how I'm being. And then there are stretches of your life where you don't feel that way so much. You know, one always gets, one can always move. It's not something you can master. It's like karate, okay? You can't master karate. You can't master music. You can only continue to get better at it. I don't really like the idea of actualization. I like the idea of optimization instead, because optimization implies that there is some sort of optimal state of functionality, but that's what it is. It's not an unrealized state, which is what actualization suggests. That something is unrealized and then it actualizes. But what I'm saying is, instead, you've got varying degrees of optimality. 
Um, some people are functioning in very non-optimal ways and other people are functioning in much more optimal ways. And what's optimal is going to be specific to a given individual and a lot have a lot to do with their type rather than uh, actualization. The way people normally use it is without a relationship to type. It typically implies that everybody is in a state of superposition regarding their ontology until some event occurs that allows them to reach enlightenment or something. I just don't buy any of that shit. Um, as an ENTP, is there a way I can... Wow, I'm losing... I'm way behind now. Shit, I better hurry up. Oh, Jesus, I'm way behind. Okay. Um, what percentage types are more prone and or tend to explain things in analogies? ENTPs, INTPs. Indian flute versus African flute, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know. I know. I've taken a few African flutes up the, the, the bunghole before, and let me tell you, that'll stretch you out. Your mom is gay. Oh, I already read that. Good. Uh, as an ENTP, is there a way I can use fancy words without alienating people? I was talking to someone, I used the word colloquial, and they were like, and said, someone said that's fancy word. I was like, what? Um, you can do what I typically do, which is anytime I use a word that I suspect people might not know, I then provide a synonym of it as well. So I go, all right, so the problem here is X super beans on Y. What super beans means, or I'll explain it, you know, just means like, for example, being 10 years old, super beans on being nine years old. You can't be 10 until after you've been nine. So like this is a little explanation like that, preemptive, you know. It's something. It's a habit you develop over time as you increasingly encounter instances because that's the way our SI works. As learners, we're fundamentally, um, we're kind of slow learners, which is weird because we're kind of the fastest learners too. But um, it, it, we we take a long time to pick up shit like that. We have to we have to pick up the instances. We don't do the ni general rule sort of thing. We learn instances of when it. When we gotta adjust, when we gotta use other words, the synonyms or whatever. All right. Um, my sister is ESFP and she loves weirdness and living vicariously through others. Well, that doesn't sound like an ESFP. I don't think you have a very good understanding of types. <laughs> so, Rini INGP. I don't think you, everything you said about yourself doesn't make me think you're an INGP, and what you just said about your sister doesn't make me think she's an ESFP. Good morning, good 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 good. Says Planet Catchup. Good morning, good 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 to you too. I sent you an email or several emails this morning in response to your thing that I hadn't replied to yet. I've died before. I sometimes think, am I a zombie now? Um, if you have died before, then it would suggest you are again alive and therefore no longer a zombie. You may have been a zombie in between. My ASFJ friend argues that time is not a real thing. Is this an example of polar and I? Well, it depends what kind of what his warrants are. If he's saying time is just a is experienced differently by each individual person, then that's a fair argument to make. If he says that time is an illusion because we're just inferring it from events that are connected sequentially, okay, that doesn't make it not exist. I mean, it depends what the warrant is. Uh, let's see. Long rip in time. Interesting. Uh, I just, I have no work, I do have a, oh, shit. Do I even have any working bong now? I've broken, like, three bongs in the last three days. Oh, well, this one might be working, I guess. A little, a little querulous about it because I put glue around here to make sure it would be more airtight, and I'm afraid I don't want to smoke any glue, you know. But um, it shouldn't, it shouldn't smoke. All right, so amp refresher, bomb ripping time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kim's no longer out here. <coughs> Sheila. What are XNTP's biggest weakness and how should they learn to overcome it or adapt to it? What life lessons related to XNTP do you wish you learned when you were in your 20s? All right, well, ENTPs and, and INTPs have different things they need to, to overcome. But I would say for, for ENTPs, the number one thing they need to overcome is their self-doubt and their their concern about unfinished shit. I think a lot of ENTPs, because they don't finish given projects, they get demoralized and they get scared of starting stuff because they might not finish it. So my advice to the ENTPs who are young would be don't be scared of starting shit and not finishing it. That's okay. But don't lose it. <laughs> don't throw it away. You know, like you might come back to it later. Young ETPs have no sense that the future is a thing that happens that you're going to need to take advantage of or something. <laughs> like, uh, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't finish this project in one sitting or two days and I don't feel like it anymore. Therefore, I'll throw the half finished project away. It's something that ENTPs in their younger years will do. No, you will come back to it later, maybe. You will end your life with plenty of unfinished projects, but plenty of projects that went unfinished for years and then you came back to and finished. So don't throw any of it away. You don't know what you're going to work on. Um, for INTPs, I would say the best advice would be I mean, the issue is the SE polar, of course, but I don't know how to help people with their polar at all. I don't think you can help people with their polar. You need to try to encourage them to have some sort of a workaround. Let your how to -edness, let your how to -edness drive drive your decision making. Their fifth slot TE, I, I mean, yeah, fifth slot TE is something they got to really warm to. I think everybody's got to warm to their fifth slot and has got to recognize how much of a role it plays in their being, despite the fact that it's unconscious and ignored. So that's a harder question to answer, what to tell INTPs. I, I genuinely know what best to tell ENTPs because I am one, and I feel a lot less confident about giving advice to other types. Kimberly Ye, by the way, the ability to make people feel beautiful and self-confidence is a miraculous thing. I will share her up that with her as well if she's not in here at the moment. Planet Ketchup wants a t-shirt. Well, we will be making them available soon enough. Right now, Kimberly likes to... You know, she's like, well, before we do anything else, we got to make them. Kimberly does need to get some copy from me. Uh, that was so awesome of Kimberly's son to gift host Eric that hat because it's fetch. It's fetch, huh? Does that mean uh, attractive? I've not heard that term used to describe a hat or something like that before. I normally use it to, to, to indicate go get me something. Uh, let's see. Kimberly takes her coffee with like six sugars and, and eight grains at McDonald's. Um, love that clock. Tick tock. I love Kesha. Tick tock on the clock. I really do like Kesha a lot. Uh, for me, I've learned in the past, in the last few months, even that we need to adapt our free time to be more productive. Having fun playing a game, for example, is quite hollow in the long term. Yeah, that's absolutely true, Matt Anderson. If I were going to give any, any single piece of advice to young males in general, that would apply to most or many young males. Enough to say it's a general piece of advice. It would be try to waste as little time as possible on video games. You're going to waste some, and that's fine. But 
realize that's what it is that you're wasting your time and try to keep it down to a minimum. I actually don't play any video games anymore, but that's within the last few years. Once my one of my PS3 or PS4, I don't know which one it was. I guess it was a PS4 broke, and I at the time I was playing Madden. Um, Madden Ultimate Team, and it was actually occupying a fair amount of my time because it's pretty absorbing. And prior to that, on the PS3, I'd been playing before they made it, it before a lawsuit killed it. I'd been playing ES EA Sports NCAA football. I preferred the college football video game over the uh, Madden. But then after they made that one, that game go away because of the lawsuit. Uh, then I started playing Madden. And once my PS4 broke, I was like, I'm glad it broke. I don't need to waste any more of my time on this shit. It's not, it, I am left with nothing except some memories of some, va some vague memories of various little games I was playing and stuff. And shit having to do with that universe. It's such a, it's getting lost in, in, in a universe that's designed to distract you. Gosh, I love, love, love it. Oh, the, oh, the hat. Thank you. I didn't get to it. I was wondering what you were going to say about it. Yeah. Um, I want to Google. I haven't Googled it yet. I want to see what Warren Hill's Cancun Jazz Festival was. <laughs> I'm curious about that. Cancun Jazz Festival. It's also very colorful. I like that. It's got, it's got six different colors on it. It's got orange, green, yellow, blue, pink, and purple. That's a lot of different colors. I like the fact that it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't fuck around with just like I'm just gonna do my this word in one color. It doesn't it doesn't have as go. Oh, I'll, I'll use two colors. There's six letters here, so it uses six different colors. It's serious about that. It's not fucking around. You know. I wish I had, I wish I had been there at Warren Hill's Kinky Jazz Festival, but alas. That opportunity is long gone. Uh, Warren Hill's merch game is strong. That's true, Joe, 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 Uh, I don't know who was I responding to. I think I was, it would me. I was responding to the specific person who said the thing I was responding to. I guess. If it's below 70, I'm freezing. Me too, for sure. I mean, I would just have to wear lots and lots of clothes if I went to Minnesota, Sheila. I would have those uh, boots that they wear in Alaska, duck boots. And I'd wrap myself in Kevlar, Kevlar wool, the combination of wool and Kevlar that keeps you warm and bulletproof. Uh... I'm uh, sorry, I'm also here before coffee. Oh, that's, that's my problem too at the moment, but I am not here before Adderall, so I'm still confident. I've only got about 10 minutes left here, and then I'm going to have to split because i got to go get my mom, and we got to run errands and stuff. Uh, let's see. I have the worst. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You need to scissor your mom, right? That's what I was telling you the other day. She needs to scissor her mom. <laughs> I don't know why she's not doing it. Oh, that's right. Her mom's passed away. Joey Joe 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 Chabadu is fragile. Don't scissor her with her too hard, playing catch up, okay? I know how all you ladies scissor each other when the men aren't around. Um, if guys, you probably haven't caught them ever. It's true. As soon as any as soon as any area where there's women, the men all leave. They start scissoring. It's a big secret. They don't tell anybody. Any men. You know, they tell each other, obviously. They, they're constantly scissoring. Uh, okay, let's see. You, Planet Ketchup says, we are constantly moving up and down with our scissoring motion. And we're sure. I suppose I personalize everything I feel. I personalize everything I feel everything. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's what it means that FI, the tool function, is to know how important any given thing is to you, first and foremost, as a way of approaching a problem or something. 
My dear ENFP friend is convinced that she evolved from ENFJ. Hmm. Well, that sounds like a very T.I. polar thing, but... <laughs> Do you have any theories about how cognitive functions develop throughout one's life? Also, this live stream is popping. Um, the I do think they develop. I, I wouldn't call them theories. I have I have my own experiences with how mine developed, and I can sort of just unwarrantedly assume that it applies that way for everybody else too. But uh, basically, I, I think that that we we spend some time going back and forth between our second and third slot function for a stretch of time until like in terms of which one we're prioritizing as a value not in terms of usage okay like um when i was a teenager i valued fe uh more highly than i did when i was in my late 20s let's say and now I, I value FE more highly again than I did when I was in my late twenties. So it, it, it's a range of the valuing, so it's not it's not a usage thing. So it's like I, it was still my tool point, it's still my tertiary. Uh, it's just a matter of how consciously am I valuing or openly am I valuing different aspects of my stack during periods of time. Now, like right now, I'm I'm definitely valuing SI, and I'm actually engaging in more. Valuing it, but you didn't say thank you. You didn't say oh, thank I you, so Kimberly. appreciate it. Really, I so appreciate it. You value it, yet you don't make it apparent. You're not SI, Kim. You're Kimberly. No, what you're getting right now is SI, right? I am getting some SI. And you're I saying you very much appreciate. I do you very much appreciate. It. appreciate it. I do right. tell you usually. I just didn't have a mission at this time. Um, does language precede thought? Yes. No. The arts are continually creating and <laughs> reinventing itself. The art of African flute. Um, can you please explain a bit about how truth is created versus discovered? I gave it some thought, so a short something will probably help. Oh, uh, well, I just... I, I think that in general, people who are NI tend to think of truths as being discovered, and people who are SI tend to think of them as being created and or any being created. You know? uh, so that's why I ask that question usually is to see what people say about it. But when you, but their immediate answer is not necessarily revelatory. It's how they how they explain it in terms of why they came to that conclusion. If you're asking me what I think about it, whether I think truth is created or discovered, I think that. Well, I think musical truths are discovered. So I just, I, I, I don't have, I can't, I can't logically defend that position for a second. I can't win the argument on it, but that's what I think. Are you watching the clock? Yeah, I know, I gotta go soon. I'm new to the channel. Why is it called Talking with Fans People? Why did you choose that? Please give a serious answer if you're really curious for the reason. Because. It's serious. It better, be, it better be serious. It is. It's a real answer, which is I was, uh, I, I used to make a lot of audio recordings before I, I started a YouTube channel. And they're basically recordings of me either doing little skits or, or jokes or talking about philosophy or whatever that. I just had them, and I just sort of collected them. I didn't really have anywhere to publish them at that point. And, uh, but then I started doing the channel, and there was a little bit of a crossover time when I was still doing audio recordings before I gave up that, doing talking on audio, and just did all my talking stuff on video. There was a little crossover time when I was doing both. And at the very beginning there, I had an audio recording of a little skit I was doing with these characters I have called The International Delight and Parker Tart Lemon Squeeze. There are two characters that I was interviewing in this skit I was freestyling. I just making it up and recording myself doing it on audio. And I began the thing by saying, hello and welcome to Talking with Famous People. As, as a title I just made up on the fly. And the name was pulled out of his ass. Then I interviewed the two characters, right? And, it just came out of his ass. And that one, I took the audio recording and I made a little cartoon kind of thing not a cartoon but like Teen. a set of a set of images of the characters in different like positions and stuff um 
to go uh, to be a video to that audio recording and i uploaded it as one of my first videos and i just thought it was a funny name i liked the name i thought i thought it was a good name so i decided to actually call the channel that and the more you stick around here the more you realize it's a fantastic name um is that's just, and that is the serious answer to the question can i have a cigarette I'm out of cigarettes. I need to leave them. Maybe I'll get more. Yes, you can have one. Jeez. Bon Pablo series. Senor, why are you not giving me the Bon Repo? We take fucking forever. Here you go, Bon Pablo. Yeah, I don't have any. You're going to have to just like. Just give me a butt then. This give me one? a big butt. Yeah, that one, not that one. <laughs> this isn't a big enough butt. They're all about the All right, same. this is fine. I stopped at the same time. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Did There's a mark on the cigarette, and I know when to stop. Yeah, but about actualization, you're referencing growth that's never ends versus satisfaction and self worth in nature, aka fulfillment. I could die happy tomorrow. I mean, I could die happy tomorrow or sad tomorrow, it depends on the moment and my mood, right? She did Amber answer my question. Did it ever answer your question? Whether she likes hearts or thunderbolts or rainbows or, I mean, is she a rock on kind of girl or is she a cutesy girl I'm trying to make a cute shirt? I am scroll back up. I don't see any, uh, I don't see any answer to your question yet. Um, what type do you think Steve Jobs was? I don't know. Maybe, maybe an ISTP. It seems logical. ISTP. I have a very good understanding on types, but I'm not surprised he's that way. I expect that from ENTPs. ENTPs are very vocal about their jobs, and in my opinion, usually correct about thirty percent of the time. <laughs> I mean, okay. That doubts aren't correct or incorrect. They're inappropriate. <coughs> Appropriate expression of skepticism that results in something that is presumably correct or incorrect. Uh, HP perceptions are usually skewed, but usually fun nonetheless. Well, skewed in what fashion? <laughs> skewed from what norm? Would you say that lack of future understanding exists for ENFP as well? I think, yeah, and I think that that grows over time. I think that's one of the ways in which our cognitive functions <laughs> make us more mature as NE DOMS is our relationship with NE and SI closes that gap over time. Although I have to say, it didn't really begin to close the gap meaningfully for me until I got with Kimberly, my dual. Uh, part of that, I was, my SI was fucking <coughs> out the window and in, up until I was 40, 44 years old, 45, 46 years old, whatever, I met Kimberly. Uh, fetch equals fierce and fabulous. Mm. Good to know. And yes, my sister is a super fun ESFP that has tons of fun on her own. I mean, I'm not saying you're necessarily wrong, Taurini. I'm just saying things you've said thus far. I'm not being consistent with the types you said. That doesn't mean that you're not those types. You're not that type. She's not that type. It means you haven't been typed. Yeah, I don't know what type you are. I have no idea. And you're asking me to predicate things on the assumption that you've got that right. And you're telling me something that's not consistent with that. And I just think, well, that may be the case if she's an ESFP who says that or does that or whatever, but that's not consistent. My understanding of ESFP. You know what I'm saying? I disagree. Our truth is discovered. And truth exists. Experiencing it is becoming aware of it, not creating it. Well, you're not really disagreeing with me then, because I said, I think musical truths are discovered. And they exist independently of humans, and they become either channeled successfully as the truths they're intended to be and become entities of a sort, time objects as their entities, and or you fail to manifest those two exactly. Just, just think about it a uh, um uh female or a male. Male. Oh. Uh any TI may be more perceptive. However, T I N E is much more accurate. 
<laughs> Amber, for sure. I mean, T, the thing about TI, to remember about TI is it's, it renders definitive conclusions one way or the other. So it's, it's generally true that what I do is TI very, is very TI accurate, which is to say it withstands TI scrutiny in full. The ways in which INHPs are better at TI than ENHPs link to the speed and comfort with which they process deep within nodes. But ENHPs primarily process TI between nodes, which is to say INHPs will parse out the actual TI calculus for a given argument chain all the way down to the bottom. And even if it's a complex argument chain, something like a school of mathematics or something. But HPs will node that shit out and go, okay, well, that's been verified by somebody, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't need to think about that. I will note this. What? I'm out. You gotta go. Kimberly's going to the therapist, y'all. Have fun. They mostly spend their time scissoring, from what I can tell. So, uh, I gotta go. You know, I have the same brow and nose shape. Mm, it's a very Germanic nose. This is, this is the, called the German lump. Ah! Ah! My God. That's how you talk. Uh, let's see here. She said rainbows and unicorns. Oh, okay. I'll tell Kimberly she just walked out, of course. What type do you think Albert Einstein's type would be? I think uh, I think INHB. Uh, rainbows and unicorns, glitter, and magical thinking. I'm, I like magical thinking, too. Magical thinking is good. Your SI is garbage, ketchup, ketchup face. What type was Charles Manson? Mm, ENFJ. I replied before you expanded on the thought. Mm. I hate SI too. I like the idea that truth can be successfully channeled very much. Isn't that a bit in the middle of any NI? Why? I mean, I, I'm an NI lover, you know? I, I, I get down and dirty with NI as much as I can. I love it. I, I, to me, it's the criterion by which I judge the success of anything that I make is whether or not it resonates as true outside of my particular experience. Um, it also has to have novelty in, in any, it's got to, you know, to truly hit the NI, it's got to have any zest to it. So I don't worry about that at all. You know, obviously I'm going to have plenty of any. I try to parse away too much any so that I have, so that it, it does pop. NI is all about synergy. When the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, then you've achieved NI. And you can only do that by getting the balance of everything just right, you know? So it seems to me the fact that we're always talking about getting it just right and making it better and stuff means there's a way it's supposed to be, which means it's discovered, not created. But that's for music specifically, and I feel less strongly about other media. All right, I got a split. How is TE for you as counterbalance? Kind of I I don't like it. I don't. I don't think I really experienced it at all. I think that I, my TE is is non-existent mostly, or when it does exist, it's very much unconscious. So. What that means, every time I try to do TE, I always find myself slipping back into TISE and um, and any and going, well, maybe it's this, it's, maybe it could be this. No, that doesn't make logical sense. When I should be looking at the fucking problem, like manipulating it with my fingers and realizing and going, okay, like when I do TE, it goes like this. All right, so how does this thing work? I guess this thing makes this thing go like that and then this thing lifts up this other thing like i used to eat the other day when i was trying to figure out how this doorknob works so i could try to fix it that's actual te 
is what I was doing there, where I was going. All right, so this goes to this, and this. Goes, so if you move this thing, then that makes this thing go up like that. And this is supposed to push this. That's T. But um, I almost never can can. There are very few things that are so obviously and necessarily TE requiring that I actually use TE. Most things I'll slip back into, well, this is how I've done it before. I made this mistake before. Avoid that mistake, Eric. But it, it's a particularly new situation and it's not very useful. And fuck TE. That's what I'd say to TE. Fuck it. Fuck it with both my middle fingers. Trial and error. Right. Press any button and see what happens. Exactly. The problem is that's why we always break shit. All right. That's why we always break shit and then go, fuck it. You know what? I, I knew I shouldn't have started that thing. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Just throw it away and just, I don't care about it anyway. Just fucking just throw it away. Maybe nobody really knows. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. You have no existential terrors? Hmm. Well... What about alligators? Surely you're terrified of alligators. What is an example that very much needs TE over all over all others? Fixing a doorknob? Fixing a fucking broken thing? Stupid ass stuff like that. I think truth, any or ni truth are discovered, but inside created intellectual systems, T I or T E. Aw, don't take all the magic out of it, Sinjin. Come on. That's not fun. It's not fun that way. I'm taking all the magic out of it. Oh, ordinality. What you need in your life, MJ, is more ordinality. Okay? I'm your TE taskmaster, and I'm here to impose ordinality on you. There's an order of operations, young lady. First you do thing one, then two, then three. Follow the order of operations. It's what an INFJ loves to hear first thing in the morning when they're getting out of bed. Isn't that right, MJ? That's that's what you have your alarm set to, to wake up gently in the morning. Yeah, I want you to, to get that bit of audio right there from the recording, from the live stream, and make that your alarm sound in the morning. Wake up, MJ. It's TE time. You need to learn and follow the order of operations. Ordinality is the core universal value that all people must prefer. You need to be more effective, more efficient, and more ordinal. I need more planning from you, and you will stop deviating from the single planned course. It doesn't matter whether it's the best course. Get out of bed, you lazy bum. Okay, so you take that recording and you make that your alarm in the morning. Okay. All right, I got a split. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.